Hi, Governor. Two small ones, one big one. Um, on number one. Agreement on Governor. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> from, from what age up will children have to wear a mask? What is the definition of fully vaccinated? And then New York has a thousand dollar penalty for businesses that don't enforce the mask or vax. Is there going to be any consequence for a business in Rhode Island if they don't enforce this? No, so we're certainly going to be um, doing what we can to make sure that the, uh, the protocols are followed um, and uh, there'll, there'll be oversight on that. Uh, you know, we'll certainly detail what that looks like as we lay out the, um, the information, how we proceed as heading up to December 20th, which will start the date. Um, we're not, we're not, we're not, I'm not a big fan of, 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 of penalties, but I also am a big fan about following the procedures and the protocols that we put in place. So we'll balance, we'll make a balance on that. I'm expecting that we're gonna get from pretty good buy-in uh, because of what Dr. Alexander Scott just laid out and uh, what I've spoke to. Uh, like, we're not gonna just sit back and do nothing. We haven't done that all along. This is a new challenge, we're gonna face it. I expect that we're gonna get good, good cooperation from the people in the state of Rhode Island and the local businesses as well. Have to wear masks. Yeah, I'll have to defer that to somebody who can answer that. I'm thinking it's over th three and under. Is that is that where we are? Three and under, I think. Three and under, not wearing it. Three and over. Uh, two. Is it two and over? Two. Yeah, two. Uh, this question is for Governor McKee as well as any of our hospital officials on site. Given all the talk about the surge uh, concerns in the hospital right now, what are the conversations in terms of being prepared to open an alternative site like a field hospital again? Yeah, so I, we're, the, we're not looking at that right now. We've had, that came up in our conversations. I'm certainly, would, uh, you know, if, if anybody on the hospital side wants to speak to that uh, now or after we're done with the uh, press conference, but right now that's not, that's not a consideration, although we are keeping the testing site open at, um, in Cranston. Uh, Rick, I heard Rick Simone on the radio on the way over here say that he would be in favor of no mandates whatsoever. I've heard medical professionals say that there should be even a pause again. Would you describe this as a compromise, Governor, between Comris and the Department of Health, the, the programs that are being rolled out? I would just say there's strong advocacy on all the issues that you just talked about and everything in between, and then it's our job to filter it and do what's best in the state of Rhode Island. I think that we're at a spot where over the next several weeks, uh, we're going to be observing the response from the, from the public and the people in the state of Rhode Island, and, and we're expecting to contain this virus in a way that uh, we can keep on moving forward and not have to put any additional measures in. But as I've said multiple times, we'll do what it takes to keep people safe, and this is a good, a good spot to be working off given the current situation. And quickly on capacity, is that the number of people in a room or the fire code allotted capacity. Yeah, I'll, I can have Stefan take a, on, the, on the specific things. I, you know, Stefan, why don't you take that, please? I'll come back up. <laughs> the uh, question on capacity, uh, Bill, the Capacity is set in, in uh, a couple of different ways. It depends upon the particular venue. So if it's a restaurant, it's the number of seats. If it is a catered event, it's the uh, number of people on the invitation list and the number of seats for that particular event. There are uh, other scenarios, and what I'd recommend to a business or institution listening to this and with a question is uh, the Department of Business Regulation uh, with the consultation and concurrence of the Department of Health, we'll be offering answers to questions. We're going to produce a uh, frequently asked question document uh, in the next couple of days that will answer specific questions as best we can, but number of seats is the best initial guideline for most institutions. Governor, I have two uh, questions for you. Uh, on January 20th, what are you going to be looking at? Because you know how the scenarios go. We went through the pause that went on for a while last year. You get to January 20th and you say, oh, you know, the numbers are down. This is working, so let's keep it going. Or are you looking to tread water for where the hospitalizations and the infections and all of that? Isn't the reality that this is likely going to probably go through the winter? What 
specifically on January 20th is going to say to you, you know what, we did well, let's undo this or let's discontinue this. Yeah, so I would say if, it, if we're past the, the point that we're currently at right now in terms of the, the virus and the challenge of this current virus, then we'll be evaluating that. I mean, like I said, before we were looking for a ramp down strategy right a little before Thanksgiving, but you've got to be flexible on this. You've got to react to where we are. So I, I would say at this point in time, the intention is that it's, that it's temporary and that we're not looking to put additional more, um, uh, any, any additional type of restrictions in. Uh, and we're confident that the people in the state of Rhode Island are going to really respond you know, to this and that the Dunk Center is going to have a uh, mask. We talked to the convention center today and that when the Dunk Center has an activity, they're going to be fully masked because it's over 250 people in a public setting like the Ryan Center. So is right now. The Ryan Center is masking up. We want uh, in those venues, you know, to have people follow the protocols. I get a lot of email from people who say they're having a hard time getting results in a timely yeah. manner. We used to be the leader in tests. Your predecessor yeah. talked about that repeatedly. And some people having problems getting vaccines. Yeah. So I know you talked about that, but if you're going to ask the people of Rhode Island to step up, shouldn't the government step up too? Is, and you talked about rapid tests. What about results on PCR tests? Well, on the, on the vaccinations, I said that we're going to build it back up to 100,000 uh, vaccine doses a week by bringing the municipalities in. And we talked to them this morning about starting to gear them up as soon as we can. On the testing, uh, all I can say is that we, we, we've, we've had more testing. I, I don't know if Tom wants to weigh in on this or not, but we have had more testing than was anticipated, so the capacity has not allowed us to, to um, actually keep up with 20,000 tests a day, uh, and uh, we're working on that. And I know, Tom, do you want to just give an update on that issue? I think it's an important question. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, and to your point, so the bottom line is, is that we need to build out additional testing capacity. So just for context, we're conducting about 150,000 tests every single week right now, far above what we ever did last year, which is a considerable amount for a state of 1.1 million. But in order to keep kids in school, keep the economy open, keep people as safe as possible, we know we need to expand on it. So where we are right now is we have completely maxed out the lab capacity in Rhode Island. We're looking to, through a rapid procurement, expand our lab capacity by about 50%. On top of that, we want to make sure we have a, a multifaceted approach. We're going to begin adding additional sites that will offer rapid tests, so you can get that result same day within a couple of hours, won't impact the lab capacity. Standing up two additional ones next week that are going to be semi-permanent, and we're going to continue to add additional pop-up sites. On top of that, the at-home test kits are going to be a critical part of the strategy. We have cleared our, uh, our shelves here over the next couple of weeks. Every at-home test kit that's not set aside for test to stay is going out into the hands of Rhode Islanders. And then we're looking to get upwards of a million at-home test kits for, this, uh, for, for the month of January. So we're looking to continue to build on that. Governor, can you just walk us through the thought process on uh, waiting until Monday to um, to begin the mask requirements? Yeah, so I think it's 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 pretty consistent the way that we've managed the state that we uh, we want to be quick but not in a hurry, and we want to make sure that we have an, uh, enough time for everybody to digest what we're doing, so that when we come out on, uh, we think that that four day time frame is is sufficient time frame to kind of get. Or everything in motion in a way that uh, won't be it be as as I said as disruptive as as possible. Just to follow up, last thing on that, do you kind of regret that announcing it today as opposed to Monday or last Friday? No, I think that uh, you know, again, we've been in contact with Connecticut, we've been in contact with Massachusetts. We're actually ahead of the curve in both both states right now, and um, looking forward to partnering with Connecticut on the. You know, on that uh, that app that uh, that Dr. Alexander Scott um, really detailed very well. So, I think that we're right on target, and I think that uh, it's important that the people that are here today that we were able to have time to speak to them and uh, to do the work that's been done leading up to this this today, and then we'll continue. The work is going to continue. You can imagine what you just heard the scope of the work and the trying to figure out how to make sure to bring all the entities together in a way that we get really good response to this. There's still work to be done, uh, and we're going to use every hour that we have leading up to December 20th to make it work. 
I would also, I believe that we're doing a Spanish translation on this, right? Are we doing one? Yes, we're doing one. But if, uh, if there's direct questions with Sabina, you know, we'll, we'll certainly call her up before the end of the conference, all right? Uh, Governor, on the booster, we the booster. know that they're crucial to, to keep people safe, that you need all three doses. Why not reopen the mass vaccination sites because folks know where those are, and many people are having trouble getting appointments for the boosters on CVS or Walgreens or mm -hmm. neighborhood locations. Yeah, so I think that uh, the, we, we certainly had that covered in terms of uh, the, the situation when we started to really work directly with the pharmacies. And I just indicated that we're going we're gonna to ratchet that up back up to that 100,000 100, shots in any given week. And we'll, it'll take us a little while to ratchet that up working with the municipalities. So you're going to see a regional and you know, you're going to see a repeat of what we did uh, back in uh, April and May as we get to going. So the capacity is going to increase and of course the accessibility is going to increase with that and the convenience of being able to kind of be in, in your hometown or your, you know, an area that you're familiar with to get the booster shot is going to be there. And I think that all indication says that our local communities are really going to um, support and to uh, reinforce the importance of the booster shot as, as Dr. Alexander Scott has laid out. We still at around 270 or something like that. What do we got? 260,000. 260, and I think I, 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 it, we're going to come up with another goal. You know, you know I, we mentioned that we're going to get 90 percent of the adults vaccinated in the state of Rhode Island. We're about 97 percent with one shot. We're approaching 90 percent now, a couple points away. I think what we're going to try to do on this one is set another goal. So I think the goal is to get 90 percent of the 90 percent vaccinated within the next few months. Yeah, so I'll, I'll refer to the contact tracing either back to you unless anybody wants to pick that up on that question. I don't know. But we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Will athletes have to wear masks as well at the dunk or elsewhere? Please repeat. I didn't quite hear that. Will athletes have to wear masks as well at the dunk or elsewhere? No, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be the people that are there. They, on that level, uh, it'll be just like uh, PPAC or something like that, right? The entertainers are are removed from the audience. The audience has got the mask on. So. And then just one other question the, as well. You're asking of the basketball players on the court or the hockey right. players on the court. Um, I, don't, I don't see that happening. But. OK. And then I know that asking FEMA for additional medical workers was on the table last week as well. Um, at Lifespan, the state's largest health care system, there's 2,000 openings at this point. Why wait a week to contact FEMA? Well, I think that, uh, again, we're responding to what we think is uh, the best advanced moves we can make. And the more help that we have, I, at least that's the message that I got, the more available help that we can uh, plug into our systems, the better off we're going to be. So, I, you know, the hospital can, certainly can answer that question if they like to. Dr. Alexander Scott, I know the governor mentioned that uh, obviously Connecticut and Massachusetts have not taken steps like this, New York has, but there's also been a lot of talk that the health department has been pushing the governor and the governor's team to move faster on some of these actions. Are you satisfied with these actions and the timing or should they have happened sooner? I also wanted to clarify, the, to add to what the governor said regarding the athletes before getting to your question so it's clear. Um, for the collegiate and pro level, they have to be fully vaccinated and then would not need to wear a mask. All of the other wonderful athletes we have in the state, particularly knowing the younger our athletes are or our um, residents are of Rhode Island, the more at risk they are because there are fewer vaccinated, we want them vaccinated and masked during the uh, athletic events. So. For you know, our purpose, we are always going to, from a public health perspective, require, advocate for putting in place the highest impact public health interventions that cause the lowest negative impact as soon as possible. Um, that's our responsibility. And then the governor needs to take that information, weigh it with the stakeholders, and be able to provide the decision going forward. Um, we're standing here today saying, come away from this 
conversation, understanding that it is time to mask in public spaces indoors. That's the key takeaway, and to make sure that you get vaccinated with a booster. Given the, the rise in case numbers among school-aged children in particular, has there been any more discussion about requiring the vaccination to go to school as colleges are doing and as kids are required to have other shots? We uh, definitely support what the colleges have done. It gives an opportunity to um, really tout and thank our colleges and universities for being phenomenal leaders, putting in place policies regarding vaccination, including Brown actually elevating boosters to be included in fully vaccinated, which we recommend and support for all of our institutes of higher ed, as well as indoor masking policies and others. Um, in terms of children beyond that, we're working closely with our uh, federal partners um, regarding the uh, recommendation for requiring vaccines within schools. Certainly for Rhode Island, that has been a tried and proven public health tool. And as soon as there are um, mechanisms in place, we'll certainly be um, presenting that as a, a possible option. But we wanna work closely with our federal partners first, and then certainly at the state level. It's gonna be our last question. You mentioned the colleges requiring the third dose to be fully vaccinated. Are you considering that on the state level to make that the definition of fully vaccinated? From a public health perspective, that's absolutely the direction we'd want to go. We want to make sure everyone understands whether or not we have the 20th. You have left this conversation equipped with knowing. Start now with wearing your mask. Start now with uh, getting a booster. Um, as being fully vaccinated. We want to you know, assess and uh, continue to give the opportunity to work into our policies, uh, the potential for going in that direction, because it's where the country is going to need to go, certainly talking um, with our federal partners at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to really encourage at that level, making it clear nationally, and then it will be even easier at the state level to say, Fully vaccinated means getting a booster. We want everyone to hear that message now, and then we'll work closely on the policies being able to follow suit. And following up on Jim, what is the top measure that you're looking for on, in a month to determine whether we have slowed the spread and can look at ending the mask requirement? Our key driver has been preserving the capacity of our healthcare systems. Uh, and there is a, a, a crisis right now from that perspective. Gives me an opportunity to reiterate, only go to our emergency rooms if you have a true emergency that you need to go to. Please access our urgent care centers, access your primary care providers. There are other ways to make sure you are taken care of for non-emergent situations. We want to do everything we can, make sure people have that message, make sure everyone is wearing a mask, make sure that you are getting fully vaccinated with a booster, because all of those components will help us in better preserving our healthcare system capacity.